everyone, I'm Alexis Sarakis, and today I'll be talking about VNTR analysis and walking through an example of how it works. For our discussion, we will be using the live-action movie of Alice in Wonderland and its cast to analyze the case of the white roses painted red. If you've seen the movie, you know how grave of an offense it is for the Queen's beloved roses to have been painted. This is why our investigation must be handled diligently. To begin our investigation, we have our witness of the crime, which is the Red Queen, who claims that Alice is the one who painted the white roses in her garden red. Although, due to some heavy bias on her part towards Alice, her words cannot be trusted alone. This is where VNTR analysis comes into play. To give Alice a fair trial, here's our lineup of suspects who are around the garden where the crime happened. We have Alice, the Mad Hatter, the Cheshire Cat, and the twins Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Tweedledee and Tweedledum will be considered one suspect because identical twins share all their genes and therefore have the same alleles. Also, for the sake of our argument, Tweedledee and Tweedledum are children of the Red Queen. How else would they inherit such bulbous heads? With all that being said, how do we figure out who's done it? Well, we can compare the fingerprints of each of our suspects, the Red Queen included just to be safe, to the fingerprints found on a paintbrush at the scene of the crime through DNA fingerprint analysis. How VNTR analysis works is that the DNA from each suspect is collected, amplified for two different VNTR loci on separate gels, and to determine which suspect is the perpetrator, the alleles on each loci must be an exact match to the evidence sample from the paintbrush. What this will look like is the two bands from the suspect being perfectly aligned to the sample DNA and the distance they move through the gel. Although we might run across one allele from a suspect matching the sample, there must be two bands from each suspect that match for them to be considered guilty. So let's go through each suspect from Wonderland to determine if they committed the crime. Starting with the Red Queen, we can see that her banding pattern doesn't match the evidence sample, as to be expected. The same can be said for the Mad Hatter and the Tweedle Twins, whose alleles do not match the evidence sample. Something to note, though, is the parentage of the twins can be seen because they inherited one allele from their mother, the Red Queen, while the other allele would come from their father, who is unknown. With those three suspects out of the picture, it's now clear that both Alice and the Cheshire Cat have DNA banding patterns that match perfectly to the evidence sample. Looking at the second locus will help us clarify which of the two it could be since the results are still unclear. Looking at this loci, I'd like for you to pause the video and try to determine who is guilty by yourself. Did you figure it out? Well, based on what we found from Locus 1 and the banding patterns we see here at Locus 2, we can deduce that the Red Queen, the Mad Hatter, and the Tweedle Twins are innocent as their banding patterns do not match the evidence sample found at the crime scene. Although Alice may have looked guilty at the beginning, she is exonerated from the crime as her DNA banding patterns from this locus are not a match either. What this leaves us with is the Cheshire Cat whose bands are a perfect match to the sample taken from the paintbrush. Taking the results of our DNA VNTR analysis, the evidence found at the scene of the crime, and the motive that the guilty party is quite the trickster, we can confidently say that the Cheshire Cat is the one who painted the Queen's white roses red. As it's said for all those who commit a crime against the Queen, OFF WITH HIS HEAD! Thank you for watching and I hope this video made you curiouser and curiouser about the topics of genetics.